50 breaches, 1,500 voices beseech rescue, four weeks late, virtue, 12 feet deep. 1,500 souls sing as they earn their wings. Sometimes I feel like a motherless child. Funny thing happened on the way to humanity. We got lost somewhere between greed and if it doesn't affect me, why bother? Am I my brother's keeper? Well, truth be told, we aren't even keeping good watch over our own sons and daughters. But I digress. That's another poem for another time. This poem is about the crimes of Katrina, unleashing catastrophic rage. Should she receive all the blame? I submit she was but an accessory by design. Defective walls, laws protecting deep pockets with immunity, no financial responsibility to colorful communities. Separated by canal, lower ninth, higher strife. Congressional bills made no sense only dollars at levy's expense, at human detriment. 50 breaches, 1,500 voices beseech rescue, four weeks late. Virtue, 12 feet deep. 1,500 souls sing as they earn their wings. Sometimes I feel like a motherless child. A long, long way from home. Indeed, Katrina perpetrated that crime, but she didn't act alone. Over time, man has systematically destroyed Earth's natural splendor to have what he can never own before Katrina ever entered the picture. Oh, beautiful for spacious skies, for amber waves of grain, for purple mountains' majesty, above the fruited plain. A nation pregnant with lies. Mother Nature's water broke. We're all here on borrowed time our credit revoked. Global warming, global writing. Earth is simply writing all that we've wronged. Poems and songs won't fix it. Lunar missions, colonizing Mars won't eclipse it. The hit has been made on this planet and we just want to move on to the next. No emotional complexities like irresponsible lovers with deadbeat tendencies. Don't you hear the alarm? You can hit snooze if you want to, but the alarm will keep ringing. The clock eventually will stop ticking. Don't hang on. Nothing lasts forever but the earth and sky. It slips away. And all your money won't another minute buy. Dust in the wind. All we are is dust in the wind. Whether we affect positive change in the world, or just on our block. The time is now. And since I like to end on a positive note, because I was all negative, <laughs> a couple of quotes from Fred Rogers. You know that philosopher, Mr. Rogers? <laughs> When I was a boy, I would see scary things in the news. 
my mother would say to me, look for the helpers. You will always find people who are helping. We live in a world in which we need to share responsibility. It's easy to say, it's not my child, not my community, not my problem. Then there are those who see the need to respond. I consider those people my heroes. Now, I would be remiss if I didn't acknowledge all the people that were there during this tragedy and gave financially, gave of their time, some gave of their lives. And you will still find those people doing those things as we face other tragic events in our, in our lives. Our world hangs like a magnificent jewel in the vastness of space. Every one of us is a part of that jewel, a facet of that jewel, and in the perspective of infinity, our differences are microscopic. He used another word that I can't pronounce, so we'll go with microscopic because that's what he meant. We are intimately related. May we never even pretend that we are not. Thank you. The rush, rapidly moving through life, unaware of the speed, shuffling among the exhausted, hoping for a rescue. Passing one another, we move. Preoccupied posture, corrected notions, or flawed focus. They are the tokens, the ride, the balance, the challenge, life, love, and living, believing that the marginal is, in fact, the benefiting part, seeing but invisible, silent because they heard the words, finding our way, we are real, not a sub, strictly making our way. Simultaneously, we ask, and we call out into the space. Relieve us, restore us, replenish us. Earnestly we need, slowly we take deep breaths, knowing and trying to keep and maintain a great speed. Thank you guys. So, thank you. Thank you. Um, this particular piece was um, picked by, I noticed it uh, several times here, but it was picked in conjunction with another, um, another event that I did here. It was yoga, um, artful yoga. And the yoga artist, um, the yogi picked it, Ro Anderson picked it. And it was funny when we came together to talk about what we saw because they were different in, in theory. She saw it as women being strong and doing what they must do in life in general. I saw it as this being the reason that I needed yoga, that this being the reason that I needed moments of, of self-care and relaxation. If we look at this picture, this was 1930s, right? 1930s. So if we look at this and we translate it, we flip it to our time, and that was our era, the lady that we were posing as, we may not have our hands in this posture. We may have our phones. We would, we would be face down, you know what I'm saying? Zombies almost, tech zombies. Um, not even noticing, I've noticed that within the last couple of years that we don't even do the eye contact anymore. We're too busy sending emoji of heart eyes instead of giving the real eyes. Um, I also noticed in the poem, I mentioned the marginal, because to me, the people that were on the end were of ethnic descent to me. He possibly may be German, maybe Jewish, possibly, hmm, definitely a minority. And I felt that they didn't see her. They didn't recognize her. But she saw them. She saw it. And as an African-American woman, 
I was taught that I have to work harder, push harder to be seen, not to be a spectacle, but to push harder. And so I felt like her strength was, her carriage up was to show that she was a part of this. And then also going against the current in a way. That was how I saw it. I imagine that this man here, his newspaper, if we were flipping it into our times, the newspaper would not, first off, it probably wouldn't be there. Um, not many people, you don't catch many people looking at a newspaper, like standing up, they might be in this coffee shop, maybe most people are having on their phones or something. But I would imagine if we were to be looking at it, he may be looking at the news on the bombing, the news on the election. And at that time, if I'm not correct, I remember you talking about it was what, after the crash, right? Just after the crash. So they had a whole list of, of, stress, of stressors at that time, just as we do. Um, does anybody know what this is without looking at that? Do you know where they are? Yeah. New York. I tried to put words with some of them. Um, and I imagine that this lady here was possibly looking for tokens, maybe. Maybe she lost something. The lady with her hand here, she was maybe thinking, did she leave something at home? Did she um, forget something? And then I thought about the women who were possibly, these women were possibly going back into the workforce or trying to. Um, that's the beauty of, of the connection between words and art. That's the beauty between that. That's the beauty of all of our eyes being able to see something different. Um, was there any one person in this that stood out other than the ones that we pointed out? Green dress. Mm -hmm. She seemed to be not even ready. She seemed to just be like, you know, I got to get through here. And I've caught myself being that way. I've, I've been like, you know, I just got to make it. I just got to get through. Um, at any cost, I just got to get through. And I think that's life sometimes. Even more so amazing to me was that the women were dressed. To me, it looked to the nines in a way. They were dressed extremely. Yes. I mean, you know, I, I don't know. Mm-hmm. 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 And also, too, this was, was this was. Could we say that this was after it was possibly? It's like one of the first, maybe, first sure, run of this. Yeah. So the subway could have been like, like a, a social, a social spot. You know. Let's go see who's on this train. You know, I could imagine myself going just to be nosy, <laughs> to see who I would see. You know, um, see if I would see anybody, you know, famous, or if I was single to maybe meet somebody. <laughs> maybe. Um, but this this particular piece really um, it spoke to to me in the in the sense of as I said earlier that this was why I needed, why we all need that moment, that break where we say, okay, hold on. Um, let me rethink, regroup, review, reboot, reset um, my day, my life, um, because we're going so fast. We're doing so much. Um, women wear so many hats. What are some of the hats you guys wear? What do you wear? Mercy. Mother, grandmother. Oh, grandmother, I know what that's like. Wow. That's big. Yeah. So we're in the workforce. We're, we're, we're going home to our second jobs with our families. We don't want to look at it as a second job, but it's, real. it's so real. It's so real. I can remember getting off my job. I, I quit my job a couple of years ago to be a creative for real, for real. 
and that has its own set of, of stressors. But um, I can remember getting off from work and on the ride home thinking to myself, did you pull out something for them to eat? Oh, what they gonna eat? Uh, uh-oh. You know, so I was like a chef. Then, okay, one kid comes in, he's got a bandage on his arm. Okay, so now I'm gonna be the nurse. Some kids gotta go somewhere. Okay, so, oh, I'm the chauffeur, I'm the slick low. So all of that, and then if you're married, trying to keep that relationship straight, um, it's hard. Let's try an exercise here. All right, everybody close your eyes again. I'm all about the eyes closing. And just anybody, doesn't matter, blurt out some positive parts that we can see from this, maybe positive lessons that we can gain from this, that we can take away. I'm all about taking away from something. What can we leave here with positively? I feel honestly that if we are to understand an artist or a poet, we have to be able to see what lessons are found within the words, what lessons are found within their strokes and the takeaway. Um, helping us be better stewards of the arts, better lovers of the arts.